Well, I'm finally doing it. I am finally making a video about flags. I've talked about it for years, so here we are, diving into the wonderful world of vexillology. Whether you are a regular viewer or you're new here, thank you for being here at all. It's always scary to step away from my established brand of content, and while I absolutely intend to keep primarily making DVD videos, I'd love to see this one do well so I know I can occasionally make some passion projects. With that being said, flags. They're just neat, aren't they? There's something about them and something about the history and the power that they carry that it, it just makes them fascinating. Like, sure, on the surface, a person could say a flag is just a three by five piece of cloth. Uh, of course, proportions vary, but uh, yeah. But it's what's within the cloth that makes it special. I've been obsessed with flags from a young age and judging by some of the comments on my videos some of you are pretty hooked as well and when it comes to flags it could be argued that no area of the world does them quite as well as Europe there are other strong contenders of course Asia is certainly in the goat conversation but I've always had a real soft spot for European flags unlike some I appreciate a good tricolor, especially if it has a crest, seal, or coat of arms on it. Europe's flags are right up my alley, so I thought I'd rank their flags to start this possible series. Now, there are a lot of flags to get to, and only so much time, so I do want to jump right in. I do, however, want to offer a few notable thoughts before going in, just so that nobody in the comments accuses me of leaving off a country or listing one that I shouldn't have. First and foremost, it has to be said, I could not care less about the fake rules vexillologists have made up regarding flag design. I like my flags to be readable from a distance, to have meaningful imagery, to feature unique colors. Sure, yes, all of that. But at the end of the day, a little writing on the flag isn't going to kill anybody. Take California's flag, for example. Internet vexillologists like to say that it's a poorly designed flag, but I disagree. Does it have wording on it? Sure does. Is the wording particularly meaningful to Cali's history? No, not in the slightest. But is it still a great flag? Yes, because sometimes the overall aesthetic matters a lot more than the subjective rules that nobody voted for. So I may like some flags that you don't, and while that's fine, please don't cite the vexillology rulebook as to why I'm wrong. Make a different argument for it, and I'd, mu I'd be much more receptive to that, because look, I've read the rules, and I've just chosen to ignore them. Admittedly, this would be a much bigger sticking point if I was ranking something like US state flags, because... <laughs> Gosh darn it, the, uh, the state flags sure do like to use some lettering. Secondly, there were a lot of countries that I had a really hard time deciding on whether or not I should include them. Let's start with Kazakhstan. Though Wikipedia lists Kazakhstan as being part of Europe, I'm not including it here because, obviously? It's a Central Asian country that could, it could be argued that it was able to sneak a tiny portion of itself into Europe, but I'm not so sure. The difference between Kazakhstan and, say, Russia is that Russia's largest and most culturally relevant cities are all located in what can properly be described as Europe. Kazakhstan, meanwhile, has a few large cities to the west. Yes, they do, sure, but uh, most of what they have are in the center and the east of their country, so no, I won't be including them here. Not a bad flag, though. I was torn on choosing if I was going to count Turkey, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, but ultimately the definition of what is and isn't quote unquote European is contested enough that I decided to add them just to be safe. Azerbaijan is likely the most controversial choice here, but I feel pretty good about the other three and I didn't really want to exclude them because I couldn't think of a reason that the other three would make it and Azerbaijan wouldn't. So. You know, whatever. They all made the cut. If I ever do one of these for the Middle East, the odds are I just include all these countries in that video too, say for maybe Georgia. Next, there are quite a few territories owned by European countries, as well as a handful of states with disputed legitimacy. To keep things simple, and certainly not to make a claim recognizing these countries or taking any political stance at all, I'm going to list Abkhazia, Kosovo, Northern Cyprus, South Ossetia, and Transnistria. Regarding territories, I'll list Aland, the Bailiwicks of Guernsey and Jersey, the Faroe Islands, Gibraltar, Greenland, and the Isle of Man. I will not be listing Svalbard, seeing as though their flag is the exact same as Norway's and that kind of defeats the purpose of this video, but I'm not leaving them off because I don't recognize Svalbard as an entity. 
It's just that again, it would be repeating a flag and we're not gonna do that in this video. For obvious reasons, I will not be listing territories such as the UK's Falkland Islands or France's French Guiana. They may answer to European powers, but these places are decidedly not European. Even Greenland is pushing it and that's as far as I'm willing to go to the West. Also relevant is that when a country has multiple versions of its flag, I'm going to defer to the cooler ones. The only catch is that it does have to still be in use. So for example, I'm not going to go with the Netherlands old orange flag which though cooler than their current flag it's only uh, it's only something that people in the Netherlands maybe you know break out on special occasions but it's not actually the flag of the Netherlands at this point or at least as far as I can understand it's not this does mean I will almost definitely miss some variations so I'm just getting that out of the way up front uh, good examples of what I'm looking for would be any flag that's usually a bicolor or tricolor but has an alternate version with something notable on it such as Poland Hungary and Armenia Austria and Germany also have great examples of this with their federal flags that they tend to fly at government buildings that have the eagles on them. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. That said, I will not be doing this for Italy because from what I can tell, the few Italians who care one way or the other uh, about their flag tend to associate the kingdom flag with fascism and I don't want to offend anybody. Also, I don't think the kingdom flag still flies anywhere. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Lastly, and I promise we're going to get to the video soon. On that note, and this is the most important take of, of all that I need to get out up front here. This is not a political video almost in any way at all. I mean, yeah, flags are kind of inherently political, but look, I tried to evaluate the flags, not from what the country has done or what has been done to them in the past. And instead, I just focused on how much I liked the look and symbolism of each flag. Out of 60 entries, only one was docked for what could be called political reasons. And we'll get to that one pretty quickly. And I think most people will understand why. Outside of that one outlier, we're just going to roll with the flags and appreciate them for what they are. Now, with all of that out of the way, we have 60 flags to get to. So without further ado, let's jump in and get this thing rolling. At number 60, we have Monaco. And this could be an all right flag, but unfortunately for Monaco, the state exists in a world where Poland, Indonesia, and Singapore all do the same flag design better. In fact, there are quite a few other countries that also have very similar designs, uh, down to the color scheme and everything. In fact, the only difference between the flags of Monaco and Indonesia is that Monaco's flag is square-like, while Indonesia's is more traditionally rectangular. And I like taking risk, that's great, but rectangular flags have almost always looked better to me, so if you're going to mix things up, I say be like Ohio or Nepal or go home. Don't give me the square nonsense. There is a version of Monaco's flag with a seal on it, but to be honest, I don't think it really helps that much. And uh, look, no offense to Monaco, but somebody had to be last and that's unfortunately you. At 59, we have San Marino, and this flag gives off major US state flag vibes in the worst way possible. What makes this especially sad is that San Marino's old flag was actually pretty great and would have placed pretty highly on this list. I mean, come on, a flag with orange and purple? Now that's memorable. Too bad the current flag is at best generic and at worst subpar. Next, at 58, we have Transnistria and uh, yeesh. This is the one I was saying got docked for political reasons, and this reminds me of how up until 2021, the state flag of my home state of Mississippi uh, had the Confederate battle flag in the upper left canton, and look, I'm, I'm all for respecting history, but when that history was so recent and so brutal and so, so just tough on a lot of people that are still going to remember it, maybe it's time to put the old away and look to brighter futures. Transnistria, which for those not in the know is a largely unrecognized state located in Moldova, could probably stand to pull a Mississippi here. I do really like the green and red colors. They're obviously very common throughout Europe and they look very good together. So I mean, it's very common, but the colors do look good together. Next at number 57, we have Liechtenstein. Uh, is it a hot take to say that I really don't like Liechtenstein's flag? Because I really don't like Liechtenstein's flag. Nothing against the country itself. Remember, none of these are politically motivated or even personally motivated, save for, you know, po possibly the previous entry. But uh, this flag is just not pleasant to look at. It also resembles Haiti's flag so strongly, this is a fun fact, that in 1936, the country added a crown to the flag just to help it stand apart a little more. 
it really did not work all that well. At 56, we have Bosnia and Herzegovina. This flag triggers my anxiety for some reason, and I probably should have put it even lower. <laughs> it just looks like we can't see the full thing. Like there's more to this flag, but they picked the wrong dimensions. They say the triangle is supposed to look like the shape of the country, but honestly, I can't really see it unless I'm being very charitable, and it's just not a great flag, honestly. At 55, we have Slovenia, and you know, even as I see, even as I say this one, uh, I probably put them too low. They should have been higher. So I apologize, Slovenia. You deserve better than this. But anyway, here is another entry that might surprise you. But here's the deal: Europe has, as of last count, about 70 billion tricolor flags. So if you're going to go with that style, you really want, you really have to work to stand out. On top of that, tons of European countries have flags with some combination of red, white, and blue, as Slovenia does. And with all of that in mind. Slovenia's flag is, to me, probably one of the worst executed attempts at some of these concepts. I know this is going to be harsh, but Slovenia's flag looks like a distinctly less pleasant version of Slovakia's. By no means is it a horrible flag, and again, I should have put it up higher, and we're already at the point in the list where none of them are horrible, but uh, it is very mediocre. At 54, we have Moldova. On the surface, I like Moldova's flag, but when comparing it to so many awesome flags, a person has to nitpick, and for this one, the ultimate downfall for Moldova is that Romania exists somewhere Hungarians are laughing in agreement. Uh, they have very, very similar flags, speaking of which, Chad says hi, uh, but I like the crest more on Romania's, like a lot more. So this is far from a bad flag, and the fact that we're only six entries in and we're already getting this kind of quality should tell you why I was so excited to do Europe first. At 53, we have the Bailiwick of Jersey. Uh, if I had never seen another flag, this one would look pretty good. Unfortunately, Jersey's flag just looks to me like a hodgepodge of Scotland's Cross of St. Andrew with English coloration and a trio of a very oddly proportioned lions. Uh, I mean, look, I get it. They're, they're English lions and all that, but whatever. It also doesn't help that they essentially have all of Alabama's flags, but none of their SEC championships. What a pity. At 52, we have Luxembourg and... Okay, Okay, let's do a thought experiment. Imagine for a moment that you govern a country that's been closely linked to another for most of recorded history. Now imagine that you're given the chance to strike out on your own and even create your own flag. What does it look like? Did you make it bold and brash? Or did you choose to go with a slightly recolored version of the flag your old countrymen are using? If you chose the latter, congratulations, you're Luxembourg, who didn't come close to changing the Netherlands homework enough for the teacher not to notice. It looks nice, sure, but gosh darn it, there is just no creativity here. At 51, we have Andorra. Before I criticize, I want to say there's one really cool feature of Andorra's flag that I want to highlight. Because the country is nestled between Spain and France, and because those countries have historically protected Andorra, they showed their giant neighbors some love by having their flag feature Spanish red and yellow and French red and blue. That is a clever detail, and I like it a lot. Aside from that, though, this is a pretty boilerplate European flag with very little that helps it stand out from the field. Still, I like that one detail, so I wanted to mention it. Next, at 50, we have hit 50, is Cyprus. Of all the European flags, Cyprus has one of the least memorable. I don't typically like flags with an outline of the country, state, union that they represent, and this is no exception. Thankfully, the pleasant colors and the lovely olive branches elevate this flag to being nice, uh, at, at least nice to look at, I guess. At 49, we have Kosovo. And if you're familiar with European flags, you likely figured this was coming as soon as you heard my critiques of Cyprus's flag. This is another one where they just slap the outline of the country on it, and even worse, they seemingly intentionally tried to make it look like the EU flag. By the way, the EU flag will not be appearing here, but it is a nice looking flag that I think does its job well. Still, despite my complaints, this flag has flattering proportions, nice colors, and just the right amount of stars to earn a passing grade. At 48, we have Belarus. Here we see an example of the principle that just because your flag is unique, that doesn't necessarily make it great. The leftward pattern, inspired by traditional Belarusian clothing, is a cool choice and really helps this flag have a unique identity, though I don't really like the asymmetry tree between the red and the green. Were they equal, I'd probably like this one more than I do now. At 47, we have Aland. Aland. I'm gonna be honest, I learned about this place for this video. So, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation, and I apologize, it seems like a lovely place to live. Now, I'm sure there are some diehard Aland flags out there. 
And for good reason. Debating the Scandinavian flags is an especially fun topic amongst casual vexillologists, namely because it really comes down to whose colors are the coolest. The issue here, at least for me, is that I can't unsee Sweden's flag, and the red just feels kind of bizarre. In a tragically Swedenless world, this would be better. But in this timeline, Alan's flag is alright. It's not bad. I like it. Up next, we get Malta at number 46. And I have given Malta a big boost here because I really, really like the George Cross in the upper left canton. And I think it ties the whole design together really well. Plus, it ties into Malta's brave history in combat, which is awesome. Still, I was pretty hard on Monaco, and this flag is very similar to theirs. So, in the name of fairness, I feel like I have to place Malta here, even though... Oh, I kind of wish I could put them a lot higher than this. At 45, we get South Ossetia. This is a cool flag and likely one that most people haven't seen before. It was a bold choice to go with candy corn colors, but then again, the Ossetians are bold people. This flag looks aesthetically pleasing, but I find myself wishing that there was some symbol to help distinguish the flag. Their seal seems to be a cheetah, so maybe go with a modified, less silly looking version of that, because I think that would really help this flag pop in a big way. Next, at 44, we have the Bailiwick of Guernsey. In some ways, this flag looks like it should belong to a much larger, much more powerful uh, nation and not some simple territory. After thinking about this for a moment, it hit me. That's because the flag does belong to a much more powerful nation. Guernsey's flag is just England's St. George with extra steps and a small tweak to the red. Despite this, the St. George looks awesome and so too does Guernsey's flag. Docked points for creativity, yes, but this is a quality flag. At 43, we have Azerbaijan. Many flags around the world have religious symbolism, and while most European flags represent Christian roots, a few countries feature the Islamic crescent moon and star. Obviously, Azerbaijan is one of these, and for some reason, their symbol is much smaller than, say, Turkey's. I like the colors here, but the squash size is slightly off-putting. I do like this one, though, and I think the blue is an especially nice choice. 42 is Romania. I definitely thought I would have already listed Romania by this point, but for some reason, they just kept winning a lot of 50-50 coin tosses in my mind, so they did pretty well for themselves, and look, this is where they end up, but this isn't a bad place for a country whose flag is pretty generic in a lot of ways. There's little to dislike about Romania's flag, yes, of course, but by the same token, there's really not much to talk about. The eagle looks cool, the crest collection is fun, and I like that they put a crown on their eagle to make it look cooler than Moldova's eagle because they're almost the exact same, so petty but effective. 41 is Italy, and let this entry stand as proof that a nation's fame and history have very little effect on how highly I rank them. Italy has a rich and amazing history, member Rome, I member, but their flag is underwhelming. It looks fine, but ultimately it's another tricolor. Even worse is that it's a vertical tricolor, and given that I greatly prefer horizontal tricolors, that's kind of an issue. It's also one of yeah, roughly a million green and red flags, so much like World War II, Italy is facing some stiff competition that they actually aren't all that prepared to handle. At number 40, we have Northern Cyprus. And well, look, we've made it to the top 40. And from here on out, we're going to be seeing some real winners, some really awesome flags. So congrats to all who've made it this far, even though some that came close to this point were pretty cool as well. Look, what, I, what, can, I, what can I say? I like flags. Now, on the topic of Northern Cyprus, this flag was saved by one small detail, or I suppose two small details. Without the horizontal stripes, this is just a palette swapped turkey. With the bars, however, it takes on a life of its own and actually looks really nice. I probably could have ranked this one higher, but I didn't want to get too infatuated with basic lines, but I do find myself really liking this flag. 39 is Russia, and look, okay, obviously this is far from Russia's most famous flag, and to be honest, I had a really hard time deciding where to place it. Aesthetically, it looks rather nice. This is a flag pretty much any nation would be happy to call its own, and yet, it feels very non-Russian, if that makes sense. This flag actually goes back to the 1600s and recalls the accomplishments of Peter the Great, and it has the Slavic colors, so by all means it is a very Russian flag, but there's something funny to me as an American, I gotta be honest, there's something funny, nonetheless, in the modern day about having a Russian flag that's red, white, and blue. Because I seem to remember them having a century-long blood feud with another country who kind of famously uses those colors, so I don't know. But anyway, jokes aside, 
aside, this flag looks really great and it could make a case to be much higher on this list because it does look really good. But if I'm being entirely honest, I really only put it this low because I feel like the Czech Republic and Slovakia and, and really to some extent Serbia did the same design, but better. 38 is Abkhazia. There are going to be those who fairly accuse me of placing Abkhazia way too high in these rankings. They're right. There's really no justification for this rarely recognized state to place over solid flags like Azerbaijan, Italy, and the very Russians who kind of sort of want to annex Abkhazia. But this whole list is pretty much a vibe check. And to be honest, the Abkhazian flag passes. Maybe it's my American proclivities coming through. I mean, the Canton, the stripes, the stars. It definitely resembles the US flag on a surface level, but the color scheme is so unique and so cool. Regardless of what it is that I like about it, there's something here that really tickles my fancy and hey, it's my list. At 37, we have France. Right off the bat, I want to be clear, I don't participate in the whole ew French people joke that the internet seems so obsessed with. I haven't heard the most wonderful things about Parisians from the multiple people I've known that have gone there, but I've heard really, really good things about French people from other parts of the country. All told, France is really cool and I like it as a country, so they're not getting docked just for being French. As far as their flag goes though, it's fine, I guess. It certainly looks nice, but it's another in a sea of tricolors, and it's only so iconic because the country has been so historically important. Make this the design for the flag of South Dakota, and nobody would say, oh my, it just has an iconic quality about it. It's nice, but it's not much better than that. At 36, we have the Netherlands. While on the subject of red, white, and blue tricolors, let's talk about the Netherlands. If you're a flag person, you likely know where I'm going with this, and I kind of mentioned it in the intro. Their current flag is fine. It's nice. You're not afraid this flag will act a fool if you go out in public with it. It's safe and acceptable. But the old flag from the Prince of Orange? Now that's a real flag. I know I care too much, but it makes me actively sad that the original tricolor isn't still in use. It's an absolute gem of a flag, and I beg the Dutch to bring it back. For the time being though, they're stuck with a good, but not exceptional flag. Next up, at 35, we have Poland. Of all the white on red flags, of which there are again a surprising number, Poland's is probably the best, assuming we're talking about the federal flag with an eagle on it. It's a nice looking flag that represents the time when Poland was much more powerful than they are now, uh, back when they were able to be the bullies instead of being kind of the bullied. It's outclassed by similar but stronger flags, namely Austria's, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a high quality flag with a simple but bold design. At 34, we have Belgium. I love so much about Belgium that it almost tempted me to break my rules and bump them up on this list, but I'm trying to remain intellectually honest, and if I'm being intellectually honest, their flag is not all that special. Good, certainly, but not special. It really, really doesn't help that their larger, richer, and more historically relevant neighbor has a very similar but decidedly better flag, that being Germany. Still, Belgians are awesome, so I'm assuming they'll take this ranking in stride and go back to enjoying life. If not, I may be in big trouble. 33 is Greenland. A lot of people seem to really like Greenland's flag. They probably won't like that I included them on a list of European countries, but they do like the flag. For me, it's just the Monaco, Poland, Singapore, Indonesia issue all over again, but with added steps. The details are creative though, so I'll call it the best of the bunch. Singapore is maybe better, but obviously they don't factor in here. This is a neat flag that does just enough to stand as its own thing. Good work, Greenland. Now, if you don't mind, would you explain to me why Greenland does not have green in the flag? That is such a layup. Come on, guys. 32 is Bulgaria. I've put this off for a minute because of how pleasant I find the colors, but this is the proper place for Bulgaria. Their flag is unmistakably similar to Hungary's, and while I like both, Hungary gets over the hump because of their cool crest. Bulgaria still looks really great, and honestly, they serve as a good mile marker to let us know that we have entered distinguished company just before hitting the halfway point. I like this flag, but this is a good place for it. At 31, we have Ireland, and I some people probably thought this one would be higher, but look, as far as naked tricolors go, meaning those without a seal, crest, coat of arms, or any additional design of any kind, it doesn't get Get much better than Ireland's flag. Very recognizable and for a good reason. For reasons that can't be explained, green and orange just feel Irish in a way that national colors rarely resonate with their people. Yes, it's a vertical tricolor and I've been hard on those, but 
Ireland is working with something truly special here and I quite like it. At 30, the halfway point, we have Gibraltar. I am a nerd for putting Gibraltar all the way up at the halfway point in the list, but then again, I am making a long video about which flags soothe me the most, which ones I think are the neatest, so, you know, there's that. Gibraltar does a great job of combining strong colors, meaningful symbolism, and readability. I wouldn't be surprised if this was someone's favorite flag somewhere, and I wouldn't blame them either. I really like this one. At 29, we have Iceland. And look, I have nothing against Iceland's flag. I actually quite like it, but it stands out as one of the weaker Scandinavian flags. While it looks good, I simply enjoy the aesthetics of Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden's flags more. I don't have much to dislike here, but in a group where everyone agreed to color swap the same flag, somebody was going to draw the shortest straw from an appearance standpoint. On the bright side, people who live under this flag still get to reside in Iceland, so I'm pretty sure they'll be alright. At 28, we have the Czech Republic. Oddly enough, the Czech flag feels like a natural evolution of Europe's excessively stripy ways. It still has the remnants of yet another flag split evenly between red and white. Why is this so common? But the Czechs made a clever call to place a blue isosceles triangle on the left side of the flag that gives it tons of unique flavor. Maybe I'm too high on this one, but I really like how that single triangle elevates a tired design above the pack. At 27, we have Vatican City. There are people who would put Vatican City's flag in their top 10. Those people are either Catholics or wrong, because this flag is above average, but certainly not top 10 material. I respect that they tried new things by making it a square, but this thing would look so, so much better as a rectangle. I enjoy the symbolism on the right side of the flag, sure, but there's not much to talk about outside of that. It's a solid enough flag, but if you were expecting it to make the top 10, <laughs> Mr. Vatican, well, Martin Luther sends his regards. 26 is Serbia. I hope this isn't taken as a backhanded compliment, but in the same way that France needs a much more iconic flag, you know, more befitting of them as a nation, Serbia's flag looks like it should belong to a much larger, much more influential country. Of course, they did once influence all of Europe to go to war that one time, so I guess I might be underselling their importance. <laughs> Regardless, Serbia's flag is properly Slavic, and it looks rather good. It's a very clean design that looks tailor-made to fly outside of government buildings, and I really don't have much to dislike with it. I would say I could see people putting this one even as high as like their top 15 or so. 25 is Croatia. Like every other being with sight, I love Croatia's checky pattern. It's instantly iconic and works so well as an easily identifiable sign of national pride, which is an underrated feature for a flag. I'm sure that plenty of Croats have checky tattoos, and honestly, I probably would have one if I was Croatian too. The fact that this one's number 25, it, it shows just how stiff the competition is because this is a fantastic flag. Bonus points, by the way, for representing all five regions of Croatia just above the Czechy. Number 24 is Latvia. It's true that most people probably wouldn't have Latvia this high, but I stand by it. This is a darn good flag and anybody would be lucky to have it. I adore how the field of maroon is intersected by a thin white line creating a flag that identifies with Europe, but feels entirely unique. The more time that passes, the more I know I'm going to wish I put this one higher because I can't get enough of this flag. I really love it. At 23, we have Estonia. What a wonderfully inspired collection of colors. Sure, white is a common flag color, but you don't see a ton of black on most other flags. Even less common, of course, is that unique hue of blue that the Estonians use, which pairs very well with a country that gets rather cold. It's nice when a flag simply looks good. It's nice when the flag matches the soul of the country it represents, but when a flag can do both, the country is doing something very right. At 22, we have Slovakia. Of all the flags on this list, I only own full-sized versions of two of them. One is Slovakia, which I grabbed while in Bratislava, so obviously I like the flag. It does the red, white, and blue Slavic design better than any of the neighboring flags and pays tribute to Bratislava's Hungarian history by featuring the Arpad cross. Lovely stuff all around here, slightly hurt by how many Slavic flags are similar to it, but as its own thing, it looks really good. At 21, we have Hungary. 
Speaking of Hungary, as we did in the previous entry, Magyar Arzag is up next. For both of you that are interested, Hungary is the second country that I have a full-size flag for. I adore Hungary, and their flag is an absolute winner. The colors look great on Bulgaria's flag, but I like them even more when they're inverted on Hungary's flag. Istvan's cross also looks great here, as does the rest of the crest. A flag that can be historically meaningful and aesthetically pleasing is always going to be a favorite of mine. I love this. Next up, number 20, Finland. Top 20 time, baby, and we kick things off with a real winner, that being the fantastic flag of Finland. Yes, this dork is also a fan of alliteration. Finland's flag is great because it just feels like it belongs where it is. A very cold country has a flag of stark white and icy blue, wonderfully designed. Like every flag from this point forward, I adore this flag and really wouldn't change much about it. 19 is Albania, uh, which a person prefers between the flags of Albania and Montenegro might tell something about what they like in flags. Seeing as though they're very similar, uh, Albania's flag is just very simple, but that does work pretty well for it. I, I think it works because it's a very, uh, just about anybody could see this flag once and recreate it fairly accurately, which is a, that's a sign of a good flag, good iconography. The colors work well, the symbolism is powerful, and overall, Albania did great with their flag. I prefer Montenegro Negros, but that is in no way a knock on Albania. 18 is Switzerland. For being a guy that doesn't particularly like square proportioned flags, Switzerland's flag actually works fairly well for me. I think it's because I view it as the square flag. Uh, it's not about who did it first, but rather who did it best, and that's Switzerland. Obviously, the association with the Red Cross has done a lot to make the Swiss flag even more famous, and who could blame anybody for liking this flag? It's truly one of a kind, and it does look nice. 17 is Turkey. Back-to-back red and white flags here. I have always been a big fan of Turkey's flag. There are tons of flags that feature the Islamic moon and star, but I'm pretty convinced that none of them do it as well as Turkey. Sure, it's very simple, but that works in the flag's favor in a big way. A flag does not need a ton of moving pieces to be impressive, as seen here. Top-notch stuff from Turkey. Now, rename the city to Constantinople, and I will boost you all the way to the top 10, maybe even number one, but uh, <laughs> I'm not calling it Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> 16 is Denmark. I'm very fond of the Scandinavian cross flags, so perhaps some of these will feel like they've been placed too high, but I can't deny how nice they look. One strength of a flag like Denmark's is how good it looks hanging from a pole or from some kind of government building, hanging from outside your windowsill. It just, it's a flag that is meant to hang. These, fl these things fly very well in the wind and they always look regal. Much like Denmark itself, this is just a cut above. 15 is Lithuania. To me, this is undeniably the best crestless tricolor. All the colors work really well together here. I'm especially partial to the wheat inspired gold up top. The shade of green used here is also pretty sublime, being just different enough to draw attention away from a crowded field of green flags. I don't think a ton of people could describe Lithuania's flag off the top of their head, but that's a real shame because this thing is a real beauty. 14 is Norway. Try as I might, I just can't be big enough to be above the temptations of flattery. So as an American, I think it's really endearing that Norway's flag is somewhat based off the red, white, and blue of the US flag, as well as the, uh, the UK and French flags. Then it's patterned after the Danish flag, so hmm. Not as special when you have to share the glory with all these other nations. Either way, Norway's flag is amazing, and if I hadn't already spent so much time on Scandinavian flags, I'd probably have a lot more to say about it, but for the time being, I'll just say it's likely my personal favorite Scandinavian flag, if not the greatest. 13 is Spain, and I know this flag is somewhat controversial in the modern day, but this video is, as mentioned before, steering clear of politics and just talking about aesthetics. And in terms of aesthetics, the Spanish flag looks incredible. Sure, the colors are kind of a cross between McDonald's and Hulk Hogan and my YouTube channel, come to think of it, but they look great together. It's also fun seeing the Pillars of Hercules make an appearance. Those are very cool. This is just a very fun flag from a visual standpoint. At 12, we have the Isle of Man. Despite the fact that the direct origin of the flag's symbology is 
Highly contested, one thing we can all agree on is that the Isle of Man has an awesome flag. It almost seems to resemble New Mexico's flag to me, uh, not in colors per se, but just in the general kind of appearance of it, but maybe that's just me. And no, I'm not insinuating something as insane <laughs> as the, uh, the Isle of Man copying New Mexico or vice versa, none of that. I just think there's something about them that kind of seems similar. I knew I was really going to like this one, but I'm surprised by how many quality flags it beat out. Really great stuff here. At number 11, we have Austria. The Prussian eagle looks absolutely stunning on Austria's federal flag. It elevates a rather good flag into elite status. Europe has a ton of eagle flags. It has tons of striped flags and tons of flags featuring red and white, but Austria combines these elements to make something truly beautiful. I really do wish there was one fewer entry just so I could have put this in the top 10 because honestly it probably deserves that. Speaking of the top 10, at number 10 we have Sweden. And finally we reach the last and greatest of the Scandinavian cross flags, that being the Cross of Sweden. Of course, it looks the exact same as many of its neighbors, separated only by color scheme, but when it comes to color scheme, my goodness, Sweden killed it. This blue is gorgeous, this yellow is bold, and they come together to just crackle with positive energy. There's a very good reason why this flag is a favorite amongst many aspiring vexillologists, and it's just because it looks amazing. It's a great flag. Number nine is Armenia. This is definitely the entry I'm expecting to catch the most flack for, but I stand by it. When alone, Armenia's flag is all right, but pretty plain. The colors are nice, yes, but tricolors can only do so much for a country. When paired with Armenia's positively legendary crest, though, this becomes an all-time great flag. Most crests will have one prominent animal, but Armenia wisely pairs a lion with an eagle to create something decidedly cooler. Is Armenia even European? Eh, I'm not sure. But they've got a heck of a flag though. At number eight, we have Ukraine. This entry is very similar to Armenia's. Without the seal, Ukraine's flag isn't much to write home about. It's essentially the love child between Poland and Sweden's flags, which is interesting, but not all that great. With the seal though, something just happens. I can't explain it. It's like the movie scene where the previously frumpy character is re is revealed to have been ridiculously hot the entire time. Is that a weird way to describe a flag? Probably so, but I've been at this for a while and my sanity is definitely slipping. Let's move on before I say anything else regrettable about this very awesome flag. Number seven is North Macedonia. This is a flag worthy of Alexander the Great, the historical figure I most associate with the Macedonian sun. And just like Alexander, this flag is... <sighs> Great. I can't believe I put that in the script. That is, uh, even for me, that's corny. Still, it's true that the flag is great and I really can't find much to criticize here. Sure, it kind of resembles Imperial Japan's flag, but <laughs> what do we want? For Macedonia to change their flag because somebody else halfway across the world goofed? Get out of here with that. This is a great flag, almost the best in the Balkans, almost. Number six is Portugal. Now this is how you do symbolism. Portugal is a historically maritime culture. So what do they do? They put an armillary sphere on the flag. The Portuguese are proud of defeating the Moors. So what do they do? They put the shields of fallen Moorish kings on the flag. Portugal has a long history of Christianity. So what do they do? They put the shields in the shape of a cross and pierce each one five times as Jesus was pierced five times. Superb symbolism across the board and yet the design remains readable and nice to look at. A++ for Portugal. This is good stuff. Awesome flag. Number five, Montenegro. With this, I brace for all of Balkan Twitter to unite to destroy me. But I'm speaking the truth. Plenty of countries have great flags, but Montenegro's is one of a kind. It looks strangely Roman and carries with it a strong air of regality and power. This feels like the flag that a main character faction would have in a video game. This thing feels so much bigger than a relatively small country. I have absolutely no complaints with this one and would greatly like to purchase one of these bad boys at some point in the future. Number four, Greece. I used to be pretty cool on the Greek flag, but it's grown on me substantially. Maybe it's all the Mediterranean restaurants that they've been opening up around the Jackson area, but whatever it is, I'm at a point where I now really like the Greek flag and I appreciate it for what it is. 
The stripes work really well together and the simple blue and white color scheme is very, very easy on the eyes. I still prefer Rome over Greece from a historical perspective, but if it's a battle between the Greek and Italian flags, the Greeks clear this one easily. Number three, we have made it to the top three and I put Georgia. This is like if the English flag was put on steroids. Beautiful, striking blood red on a field of clean white. A stunning Georgian cross, yes, but it's not alone. In each canton stands a cross, leading to this being known as the flag of five crosses. Sometimes I guess more is more. This is an awesome flag for an awesome country, and while I understand it's not likely to win any popularity contest, it may just win a beauty pageant. I love this flag and considered putting it at number two and number one. Speaking of which, number two, the United Kingdom. I went back and forth on this one several times, but I'm ultimately okay with the UK coming in at number two. No, it's not controversial or exciting in the same way that putting something like uh, Belarus up here would have been, but the Brits have earned this one. The Union Union Jack not only looks incredible, but something about this flag just screams, look at me. There is power in a flag, and this is an exceptionally powerful flag. Not because of England's history, by the way, but because of the sheer aesthetic of the flag. Combining England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland into one flag was an awesome choice, though I do find myself wishing they had committed to the madness of it all and just put the Welsh dragon in there as well for good measure. Maybe if they had, they would have been number one, but oh well. Number two is a great place to be on a list of 60 entrants, so well done, you Okay, uh, proper job, really, really nice. And finally, that brings us to the final entry, number one. You've probably realized who I haven't named yet. It's a fairly big country, and <laughs> once again, they find themselves locked in a brutal contest with the English. Now, of course, this is Germany, number one. So, black at the top, or beginning of the flag, to represent the dark days, when there were only separate entities and no unified German state. No Deutschland. Red in the middle to represent the early missteps of a decidedly Prussian nation and the blood that was spilt as a result. Gold to represent the glorious, peaceful future the German people now aspire to. When it comes to symbolism, few flags around the world do it like Germany. And then there's the way the colors work together, creating a look that's both traditionally European while also maintaining a nearly singular identity. Obviously, if there's one thing this list has proven, it's that I really, really like a good crest, and Germany's eagle is about as good as it gets. Sure, it's a tad anticlimactic for a guy called Das Food to choose Germany as his top choice, but hey, I like it, so please be nice. Ultimately, that's going to do it, and that will wrap up my first ever flag video. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who encouraged me to do this. I didn't think there was much of a market for it, and I don't expect it to do super well views-wise. But look, if you're listening to this part, I appreciate the heck out of you. Thanks for watching all the way through. Let me know. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to list all 60. If you do, I'll read it, but, you know, just for the sake of being realistic. You know, list your favorite European flag. List your top three. List your least favorite. You know, do whatever it is. Balkans, please be nice to me. I know you guys are a competitive bunch. I didn't mean to insult anybody's flag. Thank you so much, though, for everybody tuning in. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are. If you do want to see more of this, let me know, and we can do Asian countries, African countries, North, South American, all that. You know, we, we can get all that taken care of. But either way, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I've been Das Food. Bye, friends.